Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey everyone, in today's podcast, we're going to ask the question, should we teach our kids auto hockey? And if so, at what age? Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. And Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And as I said a minute ago, today we're going to talk about should we teach our kids auto hockey? Yes. Sorry. Uh, and if so, at what age? So one of the things that it's funny, because I had planned to really start, my son is 14, and I had planned to really, I'm like, you know, actually, I thought years ago I should have, but um, getting him to focus and get him off the Xbox was kind of tough. But I'm like, you know, yeah, okay, now he's 14. Yeah, he should be ready. Um, the thing is, like, he doesn't, they don't, he doesn't use a computer. You know, he uses iPads or Chromebooks. So teaching him something that only works in Windows, you know, when is that really going to be helpful? So that, that's my first aha of like, yeah, you know what? Hmm. Um, it's a, it, it's a good question. Yeah. I, I'd say it's the same for, for my kids. Hmm. I have the computer here and there's maybe a game or two. My, my, my daughter has asked because it, it doesn't work on the iPad or it doesn't work on the Chromebook or whatever it is. We've tried to do it when we can, but I'm using it myself. But yeah, we we've also contemplated um do do we go out and buy big desks where they can have some kind of desktop computer or laptop or whatever. And um with schools offering Chromebooks now and they have pants themselves, tablets or iPads, whatever it might be. And they seem pretty content with the games and the videos they can watch on that. It's hard to sell the computer per se to them. So, um, so yeah, yeah, I totally get that, Joe. Yeah, but I, I would they, say, yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I was, I was going to go on to the next one here where if they're going to college, they'll be using computers for reports and papers. And that's true. I, my wife, she actually finished her most recent school um, education uh, on an iPad. Really? Wow. Up until the very last point of where she needed help with um, the looks and setups and stuff like that, where I helped her a bit. Um, and I must say, I immediately just went to the computer, got the iCloud uh, account logged in, and uh, used uh, Microsoft products uh, on a PC to make it look the way I wanted. I could probably have done it on Chromebook or an iOS device, whichever one it might have been. To me, it just made more sense to do it that way. But yeah. For the most part, all of her reports, all of her papers, um, air printing, um, made that work pretty well for her. So, yeah, it's 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 not per se uh, uh, a sure place for them to ship for computers. Even then, well, yeah, uh, that's interesting. Um, I would say I, I can't tell you now. Granted. I I knew Microsoft Word using styles in my undergrad. Um, and, you know, I would try to work on a group paper with several people, and it was a nightmare. Um, but because I knew how to use styles, I could make really beautiful-looking reports, right, like so much better than everyone else. And it really sped up everything I did. So even though I understand what you're saying, they don't necessarily have to use a computer, it does open the door for just doing things once you start learning these things, you know, much easier ways. But at the same time, if everyone's using a Chromebook or an iPad and they're not using rich text in any way, um, that does greatly simplify things. So I could see how it's not as important. Um, however, building a report and having a table of contents and having your, your images and things numbered and keeping up with that, I'm not sure how you do that without some of the styles, but um, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe, like I said, there's I think my, my wife was using um, uh, Word on her iPad. Oh, okay. Right? So, um, so, so she, of course, had parts of it. It's not as powerful as the, the PC version as it is. It was still a, 
online almost browser like version, which are getting better, but is still limited in some of their functionality. But to my wife is if I hadn't shown her all of what she could do or I could do on the computer in Word and how simple it, it made uh, moving, structuring, all that stuff, selecting using the mouse instead of your finger or the pen or whatever, stuff like that. Well, how it, about now? Sorry for interrupting, but with Windows 10, having a built-in clipboard manager where you can store multiple things in the clipboard and, you know, revert back to them. Like, I, even though it sucks, because I, honestly, I don't like how they built it, it's really helpful, you know, to, to be able to revert. Oh, I, I copied that a couple minutes ago or whatever. Okay, I can just get, you know, go back a few. Windows V, by the way, if you're not using it, Windows V, uh, the Windows key V. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's crazy. And, and here's where I was going with it, which is you, you, you started to get into was at some point, if the child is going to be, especially working in corporate America or a business office, they're probably going to be on a computer. Right. Um, and, and if so, I think, you know what I was going to, who knows? Um, maybe, maybe, maybe in the future, maybe they won't be, but I still think at least the next five years, um, it's going to keep kind of going the way it's been. Right. So I do think it's good to get people trained. You know, the one, it's one of the things I hated about, um, schools in general in some colleges, they, don't, not that I don't want anyone to insist, but they, they have people using Macs, which is all fine and good, but then you go to corporate America and there's not a Mac to be found anywhere, and people have no idea how to use a computer, a, a Windows computer. And it, that's not a good setup for a student, you know, to start using a computer no. have no idea how to use. Exactly. So, say, um, the, yeah, go ahead. The, you can take it, I can take it. But I'd say this just fits so well with the next one. Go for it. Yeah, just knowing you can automate is as important as being able to automate. Uh, at least in, in, in our day and age and with what we're talking about here with you being on that device, with that device on, that Chromebook on, that MacBook on, that whatever uh, thing, having the skill to automate in a language like Arahatki might not be the most important part, but to me at least, the knowledge that you can automate, that it's a possibility. If we did this, or if we did that, or remember why why is um, Jerome, or whatever people are called, um, sitting there and manually doing that? Uh, I know that that can be, I can't automate it, but I know it can be automated. Or, and if right. Jerome knew it, the same thing, he wouldn't be sitting there and doing that because there's no reason for him using a lot of his precious time that he could be using on cold calling or whatever no. his job normally entitles. But yeah. Case in point, so, so, this was a coworker of mine at, at corporate America. Um, I was walking back to my desk and I heard him go, <sighs> and I'm like, what, you know, I stopped. I'm like, hey, what are you working on? He's like, oh, I have people's first names and last names in a cell in Excel, um, and I need them in separate cells. So he was manually going through and, like, cutting the first name and pasting it in the other cell, right? And he had thousands, like tens of thousands of names, and he's doing them one at a time. And he had no idea that, like, it, it's so easy to, you know, automate that. Like, I showed him in what, 10 seconds, just to split, split on the, the space, you know, it was like, and there's a perfect no, but he'd go back and fix the ones where it didn't quite work. But if you're not aware, at least aware or to, enough to ask somebody or to use YouTube to Google it, right? Like, come on. Um, so that's why I think introducing it, if you have, don't have these fundamental clues, just that like, Hey, there's a better way to do this. You don't even look. And that's to me, the really scary part. I'd say I've, I've, I've been, not teased or, or anything like that, but many of the people I know would be like, if it exists on the internet, Jack, you know how to find it. And your Google tool is, is amazing. Yeah. And I, I don't, yeah, I've been searching on the internet for many years and way before uh, Google even existed. But 
it, it's not rocket science, fault, right? It, it's a matter of rephrasing, moving down a rabbit hole and doing something different. And with how search is working today, it's, it's becoming less and less possible because Google has the algorithm there to help you most of the way. Mm-hmm. And, and most of the dark web is closed off to a different place. Google wouldn't even allow you to find it. So you need to start with a different search engine. I'm not going to mention too many search engines, but there are still other search engines to use. Alta Vista. But <laughs> Sorry. And, and so on and so forth. But for my colleagues or other people, they wouldn't even think about typing in a right. sentence of what their question was to me. Yep. They would type in a word. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, but today Google will have a much better chance of finding something that's related to your query if you actually type the entire query into it. Right. Just because it is able to determine everything. So just write out that long question. You know what? There's no reason for you to not use eight words or whatever, uh, 12, and see what it comes up with. And maybe go to the end of the first page and go to the second page. There's a second it's page. It's an amazing thing. No. So, so it, I, I think you're spot on. And, and every once in a while, and this is what bugs me, like I said, it scares me, is... I'll I'll get stuck on something where I'm trying to find how to do something and I don't even know what to search for. So I'll bug you, right? Or I'll bug someone because I'm like, hey, I'll try to describe it. I'm like, what I'm trying to get this, I can't quite, but at least I know that like I don't know the right words put in here. How would you you don't know, ask someone that maybe I think has a good idea? But like you said too, just start typing and, and often it'll come up to you. But when people don't realize that, hey, there probably is a way to do this, then they don't even bother to search. Um, and end up wasting, spending a crap load of time doing really bad things. So, so yeah, this, this is why, and you alluded to a little bit earlier. Um, I forgot how you said it, but it does. It's really, really important that at least people understand the concepts, right? That like, Hey, there's a way to do this. It's so much smarter and better. Um, you don't have to know how to do it. Just know that it's there. Right. Um, and. Mm-hmm. It's such a huge advantage. That's the last bullet point I think we can, we can give our kids is to just teach them how to, to be able to go find the answers, right? Again, um, we have a different podcast we're going to work on about should we learn everything versus, you know, learn how to learn. And then just when you need to know how to do it, you can learn it, right? And that's, it's a really good topic, I think, for us to cover. But right here, we're just iterating. Teach, you don't have to teach them how to do it, just that it can be done. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'd say that thing in and of itself is I've, I don't remember. I've, I've tried quite a few jobs in my day and um, taken, I'd say, equivalent of, of at least two educations. And I've, I've just hit my forties here. I might need a second one before I'm done. I'm not sure. I, I don't know, but. I'm pretty sure that the next generation, they will probably need to go through at least three, three re-educational uh, steps. I'm seeing it more and more. Uh, it might also be because people have chosen the, uh, one profession and then did that for 10 years and found out this is too exhausting or I've lost the drive for doing that or whatever it might be. And then they do something else. Yeah. Um, but that flexibility of people um, re retrying might be a way of putting it yep. instead of just taking an education and then just having that office for 40 years. And I'm still seeing people at my company having uh, those very high um, anniversary numbers. And I'm not sure we can expect people to keep having those. And just with how work and companies and just shifting and freelance and all the different types of ways to 
the world is changing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the companies alone have to be dynamic and change. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Well, well thanks for uh, listening, everyone. Um, please make sure you like or chime in what you think on, on when, you know, are you teaching your kids or your spouses for, you know, be, be careful. You try that approach. But uh, if you're teaching your kids um, how to automate, you know, when, when did you start? How did they, you know, accept it? I've taught, you know, I've got people hooked on AutoHotKey over the years, but it's not a high percentage of the actual people doing it. But um, I, I think it's another good podcast we could do on how, what are the, what are the ways to increase the likelihood of being successful if you want to teach someone how to automate? Um, that could be another one of our topics to cover. So let us know. Yeah, I'd say at least one thing I know from, from, my immediate uh, friend circle is that at least all of them are aware that it can be automated. Right? All of them are aware what? From people, they're aware oh. that it can be automated. Gotcha. Yep. Right? It, it, it's the thing for, I talked about it, uh, at least a, a good amount of them were still in corporate America with office jobs. Uh, but now I occasionally do get that phone call where yeah. would you say that this is something that can be automated? And uh, they probably would never have thought of it before then. They, they would just have <laughs> struggled through it. Right. Yeah, I got a call the other night. It was funny because my, my friend was working with this other guy who is a... a, a uh, a techie, his background is in um, computer science, right? And they were working on this report and they were trying to make this certain graph in Excel and he was describing it over the phone. And I'm like, I'm looking at the text. I'm like, I have no idea how to do that. And he's like, well, we're just trying to do this. And so I, I look in about 30 seconds, I solve it in Excel, right? Like, I mean, it was, I didn't even Google it, right? I just went in and looked at it and did it and sent it back. But, um, but again, he knows that he, you know, I, I've become like that answer guy. Like they did try though. That was the, the thing I appreciate is they did actually try to solve it, but they didn't know what to look for was the problem. And that was, that was part of the thing was like, and when they were describing to me until I saw a picture, I didn't understand what they were trying to do. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, and I figured out, but yeah, at least, yeah. at least again, at least he knew to, to ask. Yeah, Hi, everyone. Absolutely. See you soon. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.